Hi guys, I've been to the bargain store again today and spotted this mini skateboard and I thought maybe I could be lazy and see if I can make that into a fan driven car. So all I'm going to do is stick an electric motor with a fan on top of it. First thing I'm going to do though is see what the wheels are like, see how well it runs. Ooh, got some free stickers to go with it. I better save them for my grandson. Alright, it's not terribly free running. They look like they run all right there, but when, as soon as you put them down, they're binding a bit. Still, we'll give it a try. I've got this from the bargain store again. Uh, just a cheap uh, battery operated fan. So I'll see if I can stick it on top and see if it makes it move. So that was 97 pence for the skateboard and 97 pence for the fan. just hot glue it on, couldn't I? See if that works. Well, there we are. I've just hot glued that right in the middle. And if I switch it on, nothing happens. Which is a good example of how small wheels are not a very good subject for cars. Because it's going to take too much effort to get them moving. Got a reasonable fan blowing there. So, just for comparison, I'll stick some CDs as wheels on there and see if it moves with the CDs. Okay, there you go. All I've done is stuck a couple of drinking straws across the bottom. CDs for the wheels with the usual bottle tops for the hubs and barbecue skewers for the axles. So that's the only change. Switch the fan on and there we go. I'll go downstairs and demonstrate that in the kitchen. But that's one of the common questions I get about why do I use CDs as wheels and the answer is they work well. If you use tiny little wheels like that, although they look like they run freely, when you actually put some weight on them and try and turn them, there's just too much um, in ratio in contact with the ground and in contact with the bearings. Whereas big wheels like that, the bearing surface is very small compared to the size of the wheel so it overcomes friction much easier. You'll probably have to look that up somewhere to understand what I'm talking about. But I'm reducing the friction by increasing the size of the wheels compared to the size of the bearings. OK, we're in my kitchen. I'll just demonstrate this again. If I take the wheels back off, or the CD wheels back off, So we've just got the skateboard wheels, switch the fan on, nothing. So there's too much friction with the small wheels.
CD wheels back on, put the fan on, and away we go. <laughs> Out into my conservatory. Quick summary, what we got here, we've got a cheap toy skateboard, or a hand skateboard, I think it was actually called, and a cheap fan, battery operated fan. Put the two together and it doesn't work. There's not enough power coming from that fan to push that skateboard with the small wheels causing too much friction. As soon as I changed it to the large CD wheels with ordinary drinking straws for the tubes for the axles to go through and the axles are barbecue skewers then it works absolutely fine. So I think that's about the best demonstration I can give to explain the difference between small wheels and large wheels and the friction penalties. So there we go. Hope that helps.